scene of the crime and this is the real key to understanding economic data trading um, you always want to be aware of the price point that the market starts at why if we get a very very big uh, outlier in terms of the data in other words the data completely misses in theory the market should go in the direction uh, of the, the miss or the beat in the data. So for example, if we have a very weak US data piece, you would expect the dollar to sell off. Now, if the dollar initially sells off but returns to that starting price, there's quite a bit of shorter term positioning sitting around that starting price that if taken out, should then obviously con you know continue in the opposite direction. And that's what we call the scene of the crime. I will show you this in a minute. Now, the last thing is obviously know what the markets are sensitive to. Like I've just mentioned, the Bank of Canada was once upon a time very very sensitive to inflationary data. Um, you know, obviously you look at the European Central Bank, there was times, uh, you know, obviously when they were umming and ahhing about tapering, there was times when inflationary data was particularly sensitive. Um, so markets go through cycles in terms of economic data of what's sensitive and what isn't. Okay. Now, what we're looking for in essence, I'm going to very quickly illustrate this for you with regards to the scene of the crime. That's the play we're looking at on the footprint. In essence, the market starts at price point, let's call it 01. The market then blips up. Obviously, algorithms are quick. They hit the data piece. Now, once we return to those 01s, we want to be observing what is occurring around those 01s. Right? Note, we're not preempting. We're not selling a random blip. We're not buying a random blip. Okay, we're not doing anything random, we're not gambling here. We're looking for something in the price action that gives us a definable edge. Now, what we're wanting to see around this 01 is what the interaction uh, occurring is. Right? Now, in essence, if we see a lot of two-way trade around this 01s, it's telling us that one, there's selling, but two, there's also quite a lot of buying. Right? Now, if that buying gets overwhelmed, Right, there's natural positioning in the market. Why? Because we obviously had longs entering on the blip up, but we also had secondary longs entering on the first pullback. That thus creates an opportunity when we take out those O1s for a position unwind or a flush. And we're going to look what this looks like on the footprint in a minute. Now, the, U the UK economic data, as you can see it down below here, this is what came out in essence. Um, you know, unemployment rate 0.2 beat, and the earnings pretty much as expected. So nothing really there. You know, if we if we were to look at these five line items, there's nothing really worth you know getting too excited about. And this is this is the real mistake I see a lot of traders make. And a lot of you might be saying, oh, but the claimant number was this, and oh, but the unemployment was this, oh, but the employment change was this. So which one do we look at, guys? Which one's more important? Which one's more relevant? And that's the real, that's the real, you know, hammer home is that none of them could be relevant. All of them could be relevant. So which one do we base our our opinion on? And that's that's why we don't just, you know, go outright and, and and execute these trades. This is why we have to be objective and focus on what the market's telling us rather than what we think about the data. Okay, so if you can, if there's one lesson you can learn from today, don't get sucked into this, oh, non-farm payrolls was 300k versus 100k expected, therefore it's this, this, and that. Focus on what the buyers and sellers are doing. That's how you become good at trading these risk events. Okay, so let's go into it. Let's have a look at it now and see what it looks like on the footprint chart. So yeah, we have it. Obviously, um, like I mentioned to you every week, every one of these rotations is a five-minute rotation. I use the five-minute rotation simply because it's easy for me to, uh, you know, illustrate the the example I'm trying to show you guys. You can do it on any time frame: one minute, half an hour, whatever time frame. Okay, just remember the 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 longer time frames you utilize, obviously, the more condensed the information is. Right. So in essence, all I'm looking at here is what occurred over five minutes in terms of interaction between buyers and sellers. Now, this is the candle in which the data came out. You can see that for a number of reasons. Obviously, the volume goes to 6,000, so it picks up quite aggressively. Uh, and then also, secondary, uh, we get obviously quite a big volatile range. Now, what I'm interested in is this area. And if I zoom this into a one-minute candle, uh, which I'm going to very quickly do, you'll get a gist of what I'm trying to do. Just give me one sec. Okay, so here it is. So we can see the market comes out. Now I've put this onto a one minute just so you can see it almost like frame by frame. So the number comes out, market blips up, and straight away, if you're watching the price letter, it came all the way back down to this 18 to 24 area. All right, key little area. We can see that not just by the coloring, but also the volume being traded. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you look over this entire candle, 
you can see relatively light amount of volume towards the upper end, low volume towards the lower end, and this really chunky bit in the middle here uh, from 18s to 24s. Now, within those 18 to 24s, we almost traded about 1,500 contracts. Okay, so 1,500 or 4,000 traded within a six price range. Now, note the market then went bid up a second time. Okay, so we held this area of 18s to 24s, we bid up. Okay, in other words, the sellers sold off the number. They sold, however, into a relatively large buyer. How do we know that? Well, we can see that the buyer absorbed all the selling and the market springboarded towards the upside first. The market then comes down the next minute. Okay, notice where it tests. It tests again at that 128.24 and holds. Right, another 60 seconds later, suddenly the market not only gets below those 24s, but also gets below that lower bound of the 18s. Now, there's something very, very key here. All right, and this is what an imbalance looks like. So we can see the moment we got below those 24s, we get this little imbalance. Okay, now all an imbalance is showing us is initiative being taken by one side. In other words, once we got below 24s, note what happens. There's five lots on the bid at 23, 16 at 22, 18 at 21. So what's happened here is the seller continues to sell, but there's no bid to sell into this time. Equally, there's no buyer lifting the best offer. And that's a real clue because what that's telling us is that all that absorption that we saw 18s to 24s was just one series of absorption. Okay, Once we got below those 24s, that buyer was now done. The order was complete. Okay, We can see that by the imbalance. Now, that presents us with a unique opportunity because the moment we get below that area, 18s to 24s of buying absorption, we are now back below the scene of the crime. Okay. Market goes bid up off this 14s, back up to the scene of the crime, 18s to 24s. And that then holds, guys. That then holds as our resistance. Okay, and we can see for the next 1, 2, 3, 4, almost the next 15 minutes, the market just slowly, gradually continues to decline all the way from 18s down towards the 92s. Okay, a good, you know, call it 26, 28 per, you know, sell-off once we got back below that scene of the crime. That's the real key takeaway. Now, if I if I just zoom this out a little bit, it'll look a little bit probably easier to interpret on a five-minute chart. Okay, so again, notice that big absorption area, 18s to 24s. Market holds below it, closes below it, and we get the continuation sell-off. Okay, now, and in, in fact, you can see it went quite a lot lower back down to 83. So a really, really good, almost a 30 pip move to the downside once we took out those 18s. Okay, now, um, our two questions. Uh, this came through this week, and it's an important question. Why do you use Market Delta? Okay, um, the uh, the gentleman asked me, what was the reason we're promoting Market Delta? Uh, do we receive commissions from Market Delta? And why don't we look at uh, tools like Sierra and Ninja? Okay, what's the major difference? Simple answers, we get absolutely nothing from Market Delta, guys. Um, it's as simple as the fact that uh, I know most of the traders at Axia have been using Market Delta for four or five years now. Um, they were the pioneers of the footprint tool and hands down they've got the most reliable data coming through on the footprint tool so that's the reason we use the market uh, delta um, what I would say in terms of Sierra Ninja check the reliability of the data all right the tools are the same thing they in essence showing you the exact same principles but the data might not be reliable now I'm not going to stand by Sierra Ninja because I don't know the products um, at the same time with market delta what is quite beneficial um, if you do go onto the website, it is normally a two-week trial, but with the market prof or the uh, the pro the uh, footprint course, obviously we've been allowed a four-week trial. So that's why we push the market delta, not because we get you know promoting them or anything like that. So just be aware of that. Um, and then I was asked a question from a lady who wants to know if she should take the price ladder or the footprint edge course first, uh, and what's the difference between the two to two tools, and why does she need to take both? Okay. In essence, the way I summarized the answer was. The footprint tool ultimately summarizes what's occurring on the price ladder. Okay, the, the price ladder can be very quick, uh, so you can't always see exactly what's going on. You can't always see how much volume is being traded between buyers and sellers, and the interaction can be confusing. Right? So for that reason, I prefer to use the footprint uh, you know, tool as a confirmation more than anything. Okay? As a trader, my eyes are always on the ladder forced first and foremost. Um, but when I'm not sure about something, when I want to double check something, double check the interaction, I've got the footprint tool there as a very nice uh, summary. So that's the major difference. The, the, the ladder is fast. It's 